Hello, I'm Chef Johnny, and you found Texas Style Cuisine. Have my daughter with me tonight. She is home from college, and we're going to make one of her favorite desserts for us in our Dutch oven. We are going to make a blackberry cobbler. We're going to get started here, and I'm going to kind of let Haley start in on the uh, making the... Uh, Blackberries, we have two one pound packages of blackberries. Here's a knife. Ready? And they've been sat out where they could thaw. Ready? My bag's in. What are you waiting on? Mike? Got it. Oh, here, get it a little bit better. Here we go. All right. Be careful, don't get this juice on you. It'll make a mess of your shirt or whatever you have. Okay, here. Got them? Let's get those in the trash can. You don't want that on you. And to go with that, I have two cups of sugar. So I'm going to pour in about a half of my sugar, about one cup. Let that start working in. And then we're going to add cornstarch. About three tablespoons. And we're going to put that in our remaining sugar and stir it in there. That way it doesn't clump up on us when it starts thickening. So we're gonna get about three tablespoons of table star, uh, corn starch. Three tablespoons of corn starch. Okay, where I put it? In there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more. That one wasn't quite full. I don't think we're almost out of corn starch. You can probably you know what? Just dump you dump that in there. Yeah, okay. just dump it in there. It's gonna make it a little bit thicker, but that's okay. There's not much left. And I'm just gonna. Mix this in real good. If there's any clumps in that cornstarch, I want it to go away. I'm going to set that to the side for a second. Now, we can stir the sugar in on these and let these blackberries really start releasing, releasing their juices with the, uh, with the sugar. Are you ready to do the pie crust? Yeah. Okay. And we have Pillsbury pie crust. We're cheating today. We're not making our pie crust from scratch. And we're going to put them inside of our 12 inch. We're using a 12 inch Dutch oven today. I have my, my camp made oven. A lot of times I will, uh, I'll just rub butter inside of this. But today I don't have butter. Hand me the Pam, if you would. So we're just going to spray this good with Pam so it doesn't stick. It's a good coating. If you have stick butter. I'll get this a little bit warm and just rub the butter on it. So we're going to take this first crust and just stick it right here in the bottom of the pan. Okay. Got on a roller. If you use a 10 inch oven it kind of comes up the sides. They're really about the perfect size for a 10 inch oven. So just stick it right in there. But that's going to cover our whole bottom and we'll use one crust to kind of work the sides. Where do you want to stick this one? I think in thirds probably. Let's go one third, one third, one third, and we'll see how that works out. <coughs> just like that? Yep. Okay. Cutting this just in thirds. Go a little bit, a little bit wider. Go a little further that way. Right like there. That? Yeah. Okay. Looks good. So what I'm gonna do is is I'm just gonna put this on the edge right here. Where it covers the edge of my oven. You going to do the same thing here? Uh, yeah, we'll use part of that other one. Okay. Now, I know this is kind of cheating, but in a pinch, they work really good. Yeah, I'm going to save good. that piece. Yeah, and it's a good Whoop. crust. Nothing wrong with these crusts at all. Uh, you can buy some of the generic brands. I know sometimes the HEB brands are there, but I tell you, they're not as good as the Pillsbury because we'll use these quite often. Uh, on the trailer when we're making our uh, Jack Daniels peach cobbler, which I'll put a link in the bottom. I have a Dutch oven Jack Daniels peach cobbler also, so we'll put that in there so y'all can see it. But uh, we'll use those a lot of times making it for the trailer just because it's quick and easy in the morning. Okay. That's in there now. Let's see how our 
fruits looking, stir it around real good. We've got quite a bit of juice going. We might let those sit a little bit longer, let them juice out, and then we'll get right back with you. All right, so our berries have yielded quite a bit of juice, and so we're going to go ahead and throw in our uh, cornstarch and sugar combination. And then we'll stir that in real good and get it mixed. I don't know if you can tell, boy, that wind is really blowing today. Let's this it is here. a hot Labor Day weekend here in South Texas. And the wind is, is, we got a real strong wind, which is unusual, but they say there might be a little front coming through, I think, tomorrow or something where we have a chance of rain, but today it's still hotter than heck. That's looking pretty good. That's good. You ready to go in the oven? Looks super good. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So we're just going to pour this mixture right into the pan on top of our pie crust that we stuck in here. Let me give it our spoon. We'll make sure we get all that juice and sugar. If I had a rubber spatula, it'd be even better, but I don't have one out here with me. I guess there might be one down in my chef's kit, but I'm not going to dig it out. <laughs> so there we go. And we just want to kind of even the berries out across the bottom. Don't want too many on one side. It's not going to be a real thick one. Two pounds and a 10 inch makes it a nice tall one. But uh, we have more people, so we thought we'd spread it out some. We had some unexpected guests show up. So by doing it in a 12 inch, it thins it out some. We won't have as thick of pieces, but it'll be a lot of crust and it's spread out. It'll still be real good. But it just gives us a little bigger cobbler. Now you could do a lattice crust or a lot of different ways you could do it. We're not going to take the time to do that tonight. We're just going to put that one single crust up on top. We're going to cut some holes for ventilation in it. All right, I'm going to lay this guy right down in here. Okay. Now, kind of at this time is where, uh, well, you could decide what you're going to do with this edge crust. If I've got a real, like in a 10 inch, I'll fold it over and roll it into the other one, especially if I've done a, a lattice, because the lattice will, uh, you need something to tie all the edges together with, so this top crust is good for that. But we're just going to take this out, and then I'm going to fold it down on top of that other one. And we're just gonna kind of do it like that. See if y'all can see that. So I'm just gonna keep folding this around, kind of tying it into that crust. Now, what, what temperature are we gonna try to bake this at today? 350 degrees. All right, so we're gonna set our Dutch oven up for 350. And y'all heard me say before, working with charcoal, especially if you're new to Dutch oven cooking, that's a good way to kind of get some experience to learn. But I have this all tucked, and I'm just going to take a finger and kind of smash it around. And all that does is, is puts a little design on the uh, edge of the crust. It makes it a little pretty. But So we're going to set our Dutch oven up. So we're going to take a 12-inch oven. That would be 24 and add two. So that's 26 charcoal, half on bottom, half on top, right? So it's 13 and 13. I'm going to pull three off the bottom, or two off the bottom, and move them to the top. So we're going to go 11 on bottom, 15 on top. That's where it's going to be set up. I think our charcoal is ready to go. I feel it back there behind us. We had it, I set it on our, our two burner stove to get going a while ago. So we got good charcoal. And now I'm just going to put some marks in here for ventilation. Do that and come along here and so I've got some sugar here and we're just gonna lightly coat the top of this crust here and that'll just help it'll kind of uh, caramelize and, and make the top uh, real nice and, and kind of sugary okay. yellow crunch to it when it caramelizes some of the juices will come through and get in there and, and you'll get a nice little coating on top that's done. Now, what else are we gonna add? We're gonna stick just. Uh, I cut up some butter here, and we're just gonna throw this on top. 
And that also is just going to help this get kind of golden and nice and crispy and just look real pretty. I like just to distribute it a lot along the crust pretty much everywhere. And that'll just spread out and help brown the crust a little bit. If you wanted to egg wash it or you wanted to coat it with butter all the way you could, we usually just put pats of butter up on top. Where's the lid? Underneath oh. the cutting board. <laughs> I lost the lid. Here it is. Under the cutting board, we have our lid, and we're going to go set this up for a 350 degree fire. And here's our coals. Dump those out real quick. Get that out of our way. You want to kind of help me set the coals up here? How many do we want on bottom? 11. So we're going to go with 11 hot coals, and we've got really more than we need. We're going to set the oven on top of these. And, uh, and we just want, we're going to tuck the coals right underneath the edge and you don't want them to go too far in the middle because you might create a hot spot and burn your uh, nice little uh, our cobbler. cobbler here. And then we'll, on the top we're going to do the same way. We're going to line the outer ring with our, our 15 up on top. And then also so we don't get hot spots we're going to spin our oven, right? So uh, Haiti's, but she's helped me since she was little. We've done a lot of Dutch oven cooking since she was growing up. So now to keep these from getting too hot, Haley's going to explain to you how we do that. So every 15 minutes we'll turn the pot itself uh, clockwise and we'll turn the lid counterclockwise. Um, and we'll do that just so nothing burns. Yeah, it keeps that, that hot, kind of the heat circulating around the oven. And also uh, what we do is if you'll look, and I, I don't know if we got this, if you can see it on the camera. Watch out right there, Haley. We, can, we have camp made at the top, so I always know that I should be able to read the name of my oven. If I have one of my lodge ovens, I'll have lodge up there. Now, some of the older ovens don't have their name on, they have a number at the bottom. So if that's the case, I always just keep the number, and this one does have the number at the bottom. So that way we keep track of where the lid is. So the lid should always be just like we're looking at it. All right, how many do I have here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I need four, four more. more. 12, 13, 14. Let's find a nice big one. 15. We'll cook this for about 45 minutes. All right, we're just going to cook our cobbler for about 45 minutes. So that'll be three spin rotations. So we're going to let it cook. We'll see y'all in about 15 minutes. Time for our first turn. And uh, you want to tell them how we're going to do it? We're just going to turn our pot a quarter turn. Turn it to the right. And Clockwise, right? Yep, clockwise, and then we're going to have to turn our lid counterclockwise in just a second. And we always go the same direction so that we keep those hot spots moving. And be careful when you spin your lid back not to pick it up, because if you do, you lose your heat. We are just almost ready. We're going to check it and look at it. We've been going uh, a little over an hour now. We're about, I figured 45 minutes to an hour, but it's a little cooler. I said earlier, that's why we added some coals to it. So. Uh, I think it's ready, but we may uh, take the coals off the bottom and put them on the top just to brown the top a little bit. So let's check it and see. Take this lid off. Let's look at it. Oh yeah, boy, that smells like blackberry cobbler. It looks pretty. It could use a little bit more browning, I think. So let's put the lid on it. We're going to throw some coals on it, and then we'll get right back with you maybe 10 minutes of hot coals on top just to brown it, and it'll be done. Yeah. All right, so we've pulled it off the fire, we've shaken the coals off the lid, and now we're going to take a little peek and see how it looks. Moment of truth here. Oh, yeah. Browned up nice on top. That last little bit of the coals helped it brown real nice, but that's looking pretty. We actually have some homemade ice cream. Mom made up some homemade ice cream inside, vanilla, that we're going to serve this with. So what we're going to do is is we're going to do a taste test and we will do the uh, the final shots of it with some vanilla ice cream in the house. But I think that's a real pretty cobbler. It's looking well. And so we're going to go inside and see how it turns out there. I don't think we have, do we have a spoon or we, where we can mm -mm. open it up a little bit? Let's see. I do have a spoon in my chef's kit. I forgot it was down there. You want to do the honors? What do you think? No, I'm going to let you do it. You let me do it? Yeah. All right. We got a Crispy, you can see our crust is nice and crispy. Looks good. I don't have a bowl out here, but I can sure enough take out a piece. 
came off the bottom clean it didn't stick so I'm gonna kind of just turn this over how about that make that a a crust and cobbler shot there I think that looks pretty good I want to taste it tastes good too very good. All right, we're going to go inside. We're going to get some uh, thumbnails of this, get some pretty pictures of it, and we'll get you all a few more shots of it so you all can see how it looks, plate it up, when we're getting it out of here. So we'll be back with you all in just a minute. In the house, only brought the one camera. We don't have everything set up, but I bet you we can film this with one camera. What are we going to do here? We're just going to plate up our cobbler here. So we're just going to take our nice little bowl, take some of this yummy good. Tell them what you're doing. I'm just putting it in the bowl here. And we let it cool down just a little bit so it wouldn't melt all the ice cream. Just some good old ice cream on top or on the side, wherever you like it. And that's some homemade ice cream we did. Mm -hmm. Get you a spoon. And that's what it looks like. Looks pretty darn good to me. Looks pretty good. All right, we both have spoons now, and I know probably the lighting's not real good in here. We didn't bring anything with us. and. But the family's hollering, they're hungry, they want their cobbler. So we're going to give it a try. Little cobbler and a little vanilla ice cream. Homemade. Cobbler still is pretty warm. What do you think about it? Give me some details here. Good. Mm. Now, growing up, we didn't have blackberry cobblers. We had dewberry cobblers. My grandmother would go out and pick dewberries along the, uh, the canals out here. She followed flowing out of Medina Lake. They would be lined with dewberries, and she would pick those, and we'd have dewberry cobblers all the time. Don't have a place to go pick dewberries now, so we use blackberry cobblers, but the crust, we used that Pillsbury crust. It was nice, and it was flaky. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, it's nice. It's sweet. Uh, you really get your blackberry flavor in there, and of course, that homemade ice cream. We have a great homemade ice cream. I need to do a video of that, maybe, so we can get that recipe for y'all also and get it done, but... Uh, Hey, it's easy when you plug it in, let it mix itself. When I, when I was a kid, we sat there and, and uh, you had to crank it. We, we had a hand crank. And actually, I found one of those old ones when the kids were little, and we did hand crank ice cream for a while. Right? Remember doing that? Mm -hmm. So we would do that. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed our blackberry cobbler tonight. It tastes great. The family's ready for it, so we're going to get to serving it to them. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Give my beautiful daughter a thumbs up. She always does appreciate that. Say hello to Haley down in the comments. Let her know you enjoyed having her on here with us today. I hope you like our Dutch oven cooking. Tell your friends and family about us. Let them know we're doing Dutch oven cooking here on Texas style barbecue and cuisine. And we're gonna see you down the road. How them boys put food away beats all I've ever seen.